Welcome to Crew, Christians Rising Up. We're so happy to be in your space again. We miss you so very much. And we're just reaching out to you and letting you know we still love you, we still care, and we still want to give you the truth of God's gospel and his love. So let's begin. Let's start with a word of prayer um, because we just haven't seen you in a while and we want to start on a good foot. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this opportunity to speak to, into the lives of our young people. We thank you, God, that you have made them fearfully and wonderfully, God. We thank you, God, for their purpose. We thank you, God, for the plan that you have for their lives. We just ask you into this space right now, be in our hearts and our minds. Forgive us where we've done things wrong. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So when you think of the word control, what kind of vibe do you get? I mean, who likes to be controlled? No one. No one likes usually to even think about someone controlling or being controlling or, I mean, I guess in your world, you probably have a lot of rules that are coming down. The attendance policies, the tardy policies, the athletic rules, curfews, driving restrictions, and that one teacher that wants to control when everyone goes to the bathroom or if you can go to the bathroom or not. It's just a lot of controlling factors. Uh, when you can leave the house, what party you can go to, what party you can't go to. It just all comes down to control. And who wants to be controlled? Again, nobody. But here's the thing, it's a part of being human. There are always gonna be some rules. There are always gonna be the Ten Commandments. There are always gonna be that curfew. There's always gonna be that one tardy policy that you just can't seem to handle because it's way on the other side of the campus. There's always gonna be some elements of control. Think about those instances when your emotions got out of control. You said something you shouldn't have said. You thought something maybe you shouldn't have thought that led to something that you did that you probably shouldn't have done. Think about those opportunities where you've had to make a choice, but you couldn't quite control what came out of your mouth. You couldn't quite control what you felt in your heart. And so there's some different verses that we're gonna talk about today where Jesus talks right to these emotions. He talks right through what we can do in order to control these things. Sometimes our emotions take control. And when that happens, we don't always make the best decisions. So in fact, sometimes there's some anger that is just out of control. Sometimes there's some anxiety, some fear, some worry, some loneliness, some guilt. The list can go on and on and on. We all have one. But the chances are we learned in one way or another how to monitor this emotion. We can cover it up when we need to. We may slam the door when we're at home, but if you're at school, it's kind of hard to slam the door. Um, we may let jealousy control us when it comes to an ex, but we don't do anything stalkerish, so we kind of control it then. So we monitor our feelings and our emotions to a certain degree. Hmm. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But it's monitoring the situation. What's the best way? Is there a better way? Are we just monitoring it or do we need to actually control it? This is the one thing I love about Jesus, is that he teaches us how to live our lives in the best way from the inside out. I love that movie Inside Out by Disney when you have all those characters playing um, the different emotions. But Jesus is concerned about all of those emotions in the inside also. He invites people to do something that goes way beyond just monitoring those emotions. The cool thing is that he says um, it's true. This has the potential to make us free. And this is what we really want, freedom. Freedom from our emotions, freedom from being controlled by anyone or anything, including our emotions, freedom. And it seems like Jesus has the best solution for that. So this passage that we're gonna to read today in Mark begins with Jesus and his disciples. You remember he had like 12 closest friends that he hung around. It's found in Mark, which, which if you have your Bibles or you're going to tell on your app, it's that second book in the New Testament. The Pharisees, if you remember, these are the guys that were the religious leaders of their days. So they're like the pastors and the ministers of the church, at the temples and the, and the Jewish culture, their churches. They were known for being really, really religious. Um, and teachers of the law, teachers of what had been passed down from generation to generations, mostly not in a book, but mostly through oral verbal communication. And 
In Mark chapter seven, verse five, I'm reading in the NIV version. It says, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? In other words, these Pharisees were asking Jesus, why don't you and your disciples wash their hands before they eat? Yeah, gross. They were not washing their hands. There was no antibacterial soap. They were not washing their hands. But you have to understand the times of that day back then. There was very little water. And when you did have some water, um, you weren't thrilled with the idea of pouring it over your hands. It wasn't like our water that goes through a lot of filtration systems and are cleaned and whatnot. We're talking about usually river water or just water that may not have been that clean. Um, so the Pharisees, though, weren't really um, bothered because of what it meant religiously. They were accusing Jesus of breaking the law of the elders. They were accusing Jesus of breaking the law of their day, which was passed down by word of mouth, again, verbally. That's important, don't forget that, we'll come back to that. There was also written his law that Moses received from God. It included the 10 commandments, but there were 103 other commandments that people were expected to keep. And there was this law that was passed down by word of mouth and it was tricky because sometimes just like anything that's passed down from one person to one person that it kind of gets a little muddled and unclear in the translation. So the whole situation was a little confusing. So Jesus answers though to these Pharisees in a genius way. Instead of coming at them directly, he quotes the prophet Isaiah and we're reading in verse six. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teaching are merely human rules. And then, in case it wasn't totally clear what Jesus was getting at, he sums it up this way in verse eight. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding to human traditions. This is what he told him here. He was like, you're not really following the commands of God, you're really just trying to hold on to just traditions. Um, you're trying to lead people, you're not really, really trying to lead people closer to God. You're looking to make power plays that will keep you in charge, that will keep other people under your control, and that's really just not how God works. But Jesus isn't done. He continues in verse 14. Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside of a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. So Jesus was saying this, you're concerned about them not washing their hands and they might have things on their hands while they're eating and that's getting on the food because a lot of times in a lot of these cultures they ate with their hands, not really with an instrument or fork like we do. So if their hands are dirty and they touch the bread and they eat the bread, then it's defiling them. And the religious leaders were trying to say that this was a problem, but Jesus was saying that you're not really looking at that and that's really not what's defiling them. What's really, the problem is what's coming out of them. That's what defiles them. Back in the day, God gave people the law because he had their best interests in mind. He wasn't trying to keep himself happy by controlling or manipulating their behavior. And Jesus basically was saying, don't you see whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then comes out of the body? It's simple biology. It's going, whatever goes in is gonna come out. But what comes out of a person's mouth, those are the things that defile them, which basically means things that put them in conflict with God. Things that put you in conflict with God are things that come out of your mouth that are not right. Things that are come out of your mouth because of jealousy, things that come out of your mouth because of fear, things that come out of your mouth because of anger, those things defile you. Those things eat at you from the inside. Those things are things that make you in conflict with God. We aren't in conflict with God because we accidentally eat the wrong thing or we forget to wash our hands or, and we're eating that. We're in conflict with God when it comes out of our mouths that hurts the people that God loves. And who does God love? Everyone. God loves you, God loves your neighbor, God loves the person that sits beside you in class, that sits behind you in class, the person that rides beside you on the bus, that is beside you in the car as you drive down the street in your neighborhood. It goes on and on and on. God loves people. And what did he call us to do? To also love people. 
So be careful of what you're saying to make sure what is coming out is showing love to people. In fact, you can say that everything Jesus taught literally centered around this idea, how God loved by loving people. But we're not gonna stop there because Jesus talks about what puts us, puts us in conflict with God. He also talks about the source of our offensive words and deeds and everything that we do and we say. It's in the inside of us. It's in the emotions that we're trying to monitor and to control. This is what Jesus said in verse 21. For it is from within of a person's heart that evil thoughts come. It's from within your heart that your evil thoughts come. It's what's in your heart that that fear comes, that that anxiety comes, that that jealousy comes, that that guilt comes. Haven't you found this to be true? Everything begins with a thought. Jesus mentions murder, greed, malice. He mentions uh, deceit and folly. Every one of those things begin with a thought. And the last word he says is folly. That really sums it up. Folly is, not, is just bad judgment. And <laughs> your greatest regrets with your friends is probably from bad judgment. And when you've done something, it's like, man, why did I do that? Why did I have to say it like that? Uh, man, they're gonna really think of me some way. Uh, I should have did it a different way. I should have been better than that. That's folly. And Jesus is saying all that stuff starts in your thoughts and in your emotions. And he cares about what could happen as a result of it. And here's how this is connected to what we're gonna be talking about for the next few weeks here. The negative emotion that we try to monitor, that fear, that anger, it all comes from an in our internal environment, our emotions. So for the next couple of weeks, we're gonna start paying more attention to the world inside of ourselves. And we're gonna to try to form a habit of telling ourselves that it doesn't have to control us anymore. Maybe it controlled us in the past. Uh, we made some mistakes, we made some bad decisions, some bad judgments. We actually may have hurt someone, but we're gonna, not anymore. We're gonna move forward into 2021. We're gonna move forward in our lives and we, we won't let it control our actual actions anymore. We won't give it that power. Now, here's the reality. Emotions aren't always bad. Emotions are part of being human and they help us figure out what's wrong and what's right around us. But when they control us and make us do things that we don't want to do when we should be living a life that's full of living for Jesus and what he represents in the earth, then our emotions aren't helpful anymore. And we need to rethink how we're handling them. So to do that, I want us to remember one simple truth. Because of Jesus, emotions don't have to be the boss of you. I want you to say it with me. Because of Jesus, emotions don't have to be the boss of me. Jesus is a way better boss than any negative emotions you feel. And he can give you the strength to stand up against that emotion that is trying to control you. Say this with me. You are not the boss of me. Yeah, I know some of y'all didn't say it, but I really think you need to like get this into yourself and into your mind. So with your eyes closed maybe, and you don't have to say it out loud, just say it ready. One, two, three, you are not the boss of me. It's important for you to say it now because when it tempts you and it tries you, you need to say it, maybe not verbally and out, maybe not out loud, or maybe you need to scream it to the mountaintops. You are not the boss of me. I will not be worried about this anymore. I will not get angry where I have to slam doors and have to curse out people. You won't be the boss of me. I will show the love of Christ. I will be the bigger person. And when they go low, I will stay high. You will not be the boss of me. And you have that within you through Jesus Christ. He is that power that he gives you that power for you to say that to your emotions. You can rely on that. When you feel like you can't do it yourself, rely on the power that comes through Jesus Christ. Call on his name. Jesus, help me to say that this is not the boss of me. It won't rule me. Jealousy, you can't have me. I don't care if she has the, the curl pattern that I have. I will not be jealous of her. I will either just ask her what products or tell her that she's beautiful and I will move on. And so you don't have to let the emotions drive negative decisions in your life. The truth is it doesn't come naturally. This is something you're gonna have to be intentional about. We live in a culture that doesn't really help us see and talk about the emotions that we're going through inside of us in a healthy way. We can be made to feel weak or overly sensitive for talking about our emotions. But here's the truth. 
It's good for all of us to learn how to name the emotions that we're experiencing and learn how to keep them from controlling us. Because when our emotions control us, we end up saying or doing things that hurt either ourselves and or others. So two things I would love for you to try, and I'm wrapping this up. Try to think of one or two emotions that you have had the hardest time controlling. Whether it's jealousy, insecurity, fear, jealousy, greed, anxiety. Um, what is the one emotion that no matter how hard you try, it keeps showing up? Really try to identify this emotion, label it. When you make bad decisions, go back to what was the thought that started inside of you that caused that bad decision. Was it greed? Was it jealousy? Was it hurt? Find the emotion attached to that bad decision. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is start checking in with yourself. This week, I want you to begin asking yourself at the end of each day, how am I really doing? Look back on the day, pay attention to the emotions that were a part of that day, the decisions that came from those emotions, were they positive or were they negative? Are you still holding on to some things from that day? What caused you to feel them? Was it a person? Was it a situation? Pay attention to the emotions that are holding on to you. Are you mad at someone? Did someone say something or do something to you? As uncomfortable as this may feel to do, there's a reason why we start here because these feelings we hold on overflow into our, uh, the lives of others. And that's a big deal. We need to figure out what caused them and how to handle them. We weren't made to ignore emotions. If you ignore your emotions, they usually become stronger and control you even more. We weren't made to numb our emotions and just push them down because usually when you numb negative emotions, you end up numbing the positive ones too. God didn't create us not to feel. Feeling is good, even the difficult stuff. We just have to figure out what we do next once we feel those things. So if you're a Jesus follower, the, this is a big deal because emotions aren't meant to be the boss of us. Jesus was, Oh, me. Jesus is our only boss. Jesus is one to be the boss of us. And that's a great thing because he knows the best thing for our lives. And he has the fruit of the spirit that comes with him. Love, peace, joy, self-control, patience. Um, and so don't allow this to be the boss of you. How do we know in the book of Matthew, Jesus says this, come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. So if you're weary, if you're tired of things happening and those emotions of fatigue and just um, aggravation and frustration happening in your life, Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. Another time in John 14 and 27, Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. There's 365 times in the Bible where God says, fear not. He's not created you to fear. So this is emotion that he has asked you to control. He won't come in and just control it in your life, but if you ask him for that strength, he will give you that strength. It's, it, whatever vibes we're feeling, whatever mood we're in, whatever emotions that we're dealing with, we have the power to control it and it's worth to control it so that we can not only live our best life, but we can bring others into their best life. He's worth listening to. Listen to Christ as he speaks to you, as God speaks to you and how to handle the emotions that you have. And if you follow him, you'll find out yourself. Remember because Jesus, emotions don't have to be the boss of you. So imagine if this was a real reality and this happens for you right away. How would your house look different? How would your family look different? How would your life be different? How would your life at school be different? How would your life at your job be different? Or think about this. How would the people around you be different? How would your dad be different maybe if he wasn't so angry all the time? How would your stepbrother be different if he didn't let jealousy maybe control him? If those people's lives would be, if your life would be different because those people were different, imagine how many people's lives you're affecting. You're most likely affecting a lot more lives than you realize. So in my close here, I just wanna pray for you 
And I just want to encourage you to talk to either a parent that you can, you know, lay out everything on the table with, so to speak, a parent that you can get real with, a parent that you don't have to hide, or if there's someone that's like a mentor to you or a small group leader or a friend, a confidant that you can speak with to, to talk about these real emotions. And if all this fails, if there's no one else in your life that fits that bill that you can talk to like that, it's always Jesus. You can always pray to Jesus and say, God, this is how I'm feeling about her. This is how I'm feeling about this situation. Help me, God, to control this emotion. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to come into your presence. Thank you, God, that you've given us the power, God, over everything that is happening in our lives inside of us, God. We thank you, God, that it is not what comes in our body that defiles us, but what comes out of our heart, God. Help us to have a heart that pleases you. Forgive us, God, for where we've sinned and made bad decisions in the past. Help us, God, to control our emotions so we don't continue to make bad decisions because of negative emotions, God. We know things will happen in life, but we thank you, God, for the control over those things. Help us as we continue to listen to your word and seek you and pray to you, God, that we will hear your voice and another we won't follow. No other voices will follow, not that voice that's telling us to fear or to be mad or to do things that are a bad judgment. We just thank you and we praise you, God, because you have our best life in mind and we want to love people like you have, God. So help us to make the decisions to control our emotions so we can show love to others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, until next time.